The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome, everyone, to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and always happy host. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Well, that was unexpected. Uh, we're off uh, 18 and a half points on the S&P cash. And uh, that has um, eh, little implications. We were, uh, again, I'm not going to get too wigged out or excited or uh, bent out of shape. Uh, Monday and Tuesday are always options rollover days. And you shouldn't hang it too much on it. Tomorrow is far more important to the day. Uh, if we bounce right back up and that's it, well, that's telling you something. But you probably don't have to be too uh, smart to think that maybe a handful of people are eh, kind of get out of Dodge before uh, the weekend and the uh, G20 meeting between uh, Xi and uh, President Trump. So it, it's just not, um, well, let me put it this way. I don't think there was any kind of uh, big thought that we were going to have some kind of massive rally before the end of the week. Uh, we did have uh, Mr. Powell come out and do his little dance on the catwalk. Uh, but he said, uh, well, don't get too excited about um, uh, rate cuts. And uh, we won't bend to uh, political pressure. And, of course, uh, it was, uh, I think, Bullock came out. And also said that uh, don't expect any more than a quarter percent rate cut uh, coming into the next meeting. And that kind of just put a little bit. But, you know, in the scheme of things, we're up fairly close to the highs. Uh, does The first question is always going to be, did this pullback happen on extensively heavier volume? And the answer so far is no. We are just cresting 4 billion shares on the uh, CBOE's consolidated tape. Uh, if you're new to the show, uh, go ahead and email me at path at tfnn.com, and I'll be glad to send you a link to it. But it's uh, the volume uh, for all stocks, no matter where they're traded, uh, at least in the United States. And uh, it breaks them down in every single way that you think that you would uh, want to, including dollar-wise. So, you know, uh, <laughs> Is there anything really to jump up and down about? No. Am I going to get excited? Um, no. And uh, to paraphrase uh, Sigmund Freud, who generally I call Sigmund Fraud, but uh, he says sometimes a cigar is just a cigar, and sometimes uh, this is just uh, noise and not a lot of signal. Uh, to me, uh, anything that happened so far yesterday and today pales in comparison on what's going to happen on the news this weekend. So I'm not in a big uh, furor to get in front of a lot of stuff going on in the market, but I have a feeling a lot of other people are probably thinking today, well, maybe we'll exit stage left. We'll see what happens next Monday. And again, a uh, big historical uh, precedent is uh, markets really moving after uh big three-day or four-day weekends like we have coming up for the 4th of July, uh, where volume's going to be very light. What happens after the 4th of July is 10 times, I suspect, more important than what we see today. A lot of people look at everything that the market does and start thinking uh, and imagining and blowing it out of proportion, mostly because the things that really matter matter for a long time. But the things that happen very quickly, we weigh way too uh, uh, important on the daily basis. And eh, I always like what uh, Nassim Tlaib said. 
He reads the uh, paper on a park bench on Saturday afternoon to uh, reflect and see how the market actually reacted to the news and not uh, trying to anticipate it. Uh, but other than that, for the most part, everybody puts way, way too much em emphasis on what happens exactly now and uh, probably not looking for the trend that has developed. Uh, thanks for the uh, emails. Of course, you can email me at path at tfnn.com. Uh, um, what else? Uh, okay. What do we got here? Um, well, we'll answer that question during the break. We've got an email here that I'm probably not going to answer uh, on the air, although it is a good question. But uh, that's it. Not a lot of volume. Uh, you would think with the dollar movement, we probably would have a little bit more volume uh, over the last few days, but really not that exciting. 95.62 is the last tick that I see on the dollar index. So we continue to look at a great deal of these uh, indicators, and everybody's getting freaked out about them. Um, I don't think they're going to matter that much until uh, we actually see what's going to happen at the trade deal. Uh, I also was uh, listening to some uh, folks that looked at historical movements in the market based on tariffs. And for the most part, if the economy's humming along, tariffs don't seem to matter. I know that flies in the conventional face of a lot of folks because uh, if you're in a recession and you add tariffs, generally that seems fairly bad. Uh, but in the 50s, we had fairly significant uh, tariffs and the economy boomed uh, post-war. So if you're doing good, uh, tariffs seem to make it better. And if you're doing bad, tariffs seem to make it worse. At least historically, there was like three or four times uh, in the nation's history that we've looked at it. And it seems like that's what it is. If things are being bad, tariffs make them worse. If things are going good, sometimes they make them better. So when everybody's predicting doom and the end of the world, I tend to uh, listen to Oddball from the historically accurate movie, 1970, Kelly's Heroes, who says enough with the negative waves. Um, hadn't developed so far. When it does, I'll change my opinion. But right now, just too many negative waves. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think that there's a reason for them. And uh, I think maybe the more people wish for the end of the world, maybe the less likely it is to develop. Um, well, let's do a little history. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. Where did it go? I'm sure I did it. No, we don't have quite the time that I need. When we come back, we'll do uh, the historical uh, segment. But again, uh, as we look out here today, mm, off 17 and a half points now, 29, 27 and a half. And what else? Uh, mm, off 121 on the Dow, NASDAQ's off 83. Russell's flat. We'll be back in a minute. FNN has put together the best lineup of live content for traders by traders every market day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected minds in the business. TFNN broadcasts five days a week, live from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. Eastern Time. We have live programming every market day during market hours. Every morning, Larry Pesavento kicks off the trading day live at 9 a.m. and breaks down the opening bell with Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom and Tommy O'Brien host the TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour, followed at 11 a.m. by the team at TD Ameritrade and Thinkorswim with Fast Market. Basil Chapman hosts the Tiger Technicians Hour at noon, Steve Rhodes at 1 p.m. with the Trader's Edge, Dave White at 2 p.m. with the Power Trading Hour, and Tom O'Brien anchors the daily lineup from 3 till 5 as host of the Tom O'Brien Show. Tune in to TFNN's Tiger TV on your computer or mobile device, and you can always find us streaming on YouTube. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And you can email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, you can always put a message in the den and uh, call me at 877-927-6648. Um, oh, did we already play history? History repeating? We'll do it again. I love it. Shirley Bassey, for those people that don't know, but from the propeller heads, late 1990s. What a great song. You ought to check that out. The Propeller Heads. Um, oh, history. we got to get to that. On this day in 1957, a giant uh, explosion happened on the Mayaki plant. This was in the Ural Mountains of uh, Russia uh, and releasing more radioactive contamination than Chernobyl. When people say that Chernobyl is the most uh, uh, radioactive place on Earth, they're wrong. And uh, Fukushima, about a tenth of Chernobyl, and Chernobyl, about a fortieth of this plant. And what happened on this day? Well, in a hurry to make uh, uranium uh, and enrich uranium and some other stuff, uh, this small town, which did not even have a name, uh, they called it City 40, which is all it could. You couldn't go in or out of it uh, if you went to work for Whatever happened in there, you never left it. In fact, uh, the first person that was able to leave was about 1989, after the fall of Russia. Somebody, a handful of people got out. And of course, in the early 90s, uh, after the uh, fall of the Soviet Union, uh, some of the documents came to light. Um, we also are told that uh, Chernobyl was the worst uh, loss of life for cancer. That's probably pales by City 40. Uh, they had, well, they started making uh, uranium in uh, 1948 or 1947 in this city and threw it together fairly quickly. Didn't think about what they should do uh, with the nuclear waste. They just started putting it in cans uh, in big uh, tanks and floating it around in water. Uh, but uh, they weren't very interested in actually keeping that water flowing around it to keep it cool. And on a very hot day in July, uh, one of these tanks rush or ruptured, 
uh, and uh, the resulting explosion of other tanks with it uh, was about the equivalent of 100 uh, tons of TNT. It's a rather large explosion, shot uh, radioactive waste uh, in about 10 miles all the way around it, uh, to a lesser extent, about 100 miles all around it. Uh, but what most people don't tell you is they want you to be afraid of uranium and plutonium, which are both pretty nasty things. But they decay fairly slowly. It's cesium and iodine and a bunch of other uh, waste products of nuclear reactions that are the stuff. Uh, because, uh, you know, if it's going to decay and it's got a half-life of uh, 200,000 years, that means that it's, it's going to be pretty slow at decaying and I put out a lot of radiation. A lot of the, uh, like iodine and cesium and uh, calcium, um, some of those things decay in 15 days. So they're massively radioactive for a very, very short amount of time. Uh, there are longer things that uh, take longer. But, uh, well, they just kind of left it in this lake uh, dumped the rest of the stuff in this lake for a while. And it was all good and well until they got a very big dry spell and the lake started to dry up. In fact, it dried, dried up all the way to where it was uh, just a uh, uh, just a big hole in the ground where a lake used to be. And all the uh, soil at the bottom of the lake dried out. They had a freak dust storm. And once again in 1967, uh, irradiated another 50,000 people with very high levels of radiation. But uh, when everybody tells you that uh, Fukushima's bad and uh, uh, Chernobyl was bad, it was a drop in the bucket of what happened today in 1957. And of course, uh, everybody had to learn kind of the hard way. But in Russia, no one learns because everything was swept under the rug. People that knew about it were shot or put in gulags, uh, and uh, only very high-level documents actually still exist for one of the worst days uh, for nuclear energy and uh, nuclear bombs on this day in 1957. Um, what else is going on? That's why you always shouldn't remember or think about history, because it's not always what they tell you. And see what else we've got here. Okay. Oh. Clicked on the wrong button here. Let me try to get that back up. There we go. Uh, first question out of the gate today is about Google. And, uh, well, you've got what I think is an ABC on the way down. You didn't have much of a reaction. Um, for those folks that do not know and probably don't watch uh, YouTube a lot or some of the content creators, they're fairly mad. But not only that, um, you've got the woman that's run Google, and or excuse me, run YouTube uh, for about 20 years, acting very much in the way of the Soviets, uh, getting rid of anybody that has a dis, uh, dissenting opinion for anything that they like. Uh, they've become very, very horrible, uh, both censors and squashing freedom of speech. I call them the child... Uh, molesters of free speech. They've become rather draconian. Uh, a bunch of inside uh, video has come to pass lately about how they're going to try to manipulate the 2020 elections. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah I, I, I think some people, they, they are just like people that pray, or adults that prey on children. That is, they somehow can excuse all the horrible things that other folks did, like the Nazis and uh, the propaganda of those folks. Uh, but uh, for a company that was fun, uh, founded on uh, and motto was, don't be evil, they've become incredibly evil. And I suspect their day of reckoning is coming. Um, there is some new companies that are coming out to compete with them. And uh, they go by the name of things like Liberty, and uh, freedom of speech isn't about uh, speech that you like, but it's defending uh, speech you dislike. And uh, that tells you all the difference in the world. And uh, almost ironic, the uh, place uh, that was the 
birth of the free speech movement of the 60s is actually now that it's got some power uh, acting exactly like the people they decried in the 60s. But it is interesting. Um, anyway, for Google, I suspect they could be doing very badly. One of the reasons is a lot of the content creators are looking to go anywhere else as Google tries to screw them over. Um, of course, a lot of these folks uh, have made their living and decided to uh, either have Patreon sus uh, subscribers, i.e. people that help them out to uh, uh, fund and basically make a living out of making YouTube channels. Uh, another thing is you can rely on the advertising uh, that Google gives. Uh, but uh, it seems rather willy or nilly on the way that their algorithms uh, go and push people to different things. But uh, most of the content... Oh, we're out. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South Africa, African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Coming back, uh, looking at the technical aspects of Google in the charts, uh, you gapped off with huge volume on the April 29th I, uh, and of course the... Uh, Next day was uh, April 30th. It came down on about 6.7 million shares. Uh, but I suspect right now that uh, problems, in, especially in YouTube and search, are starting to add up for Google, especially in Europe. And they're doing anything they can to uh, get money, including uh, screw over their uh, content providers uh, that actually drive people to the websites. 
in favor of corporate uh, clients like the existing networks. Uh, and a lot of people have been testing the algorithms uh, and putting stuff in. So there's a lot, of, there is more than just me blowing about it uh, on my show. Uh, but if you set up the technical aspect of it, we've done basically a 37% retrace uh, back up to 1126. And at best, I think you want to see a test of 1027. Uh, at worst, this comes back to 853. I don't know if it does it this summer uh, on that and breaks the 1027. But I do suspect that even if this thing goes sideways for a while, the 8 56 projection is probably not very far off on Google. Uh, the reason I suspect it, like I said, is we're already starting to see uh, third party uh, companies come in and apply to not only uh, free speech, uh, political activists and putting their channels on it, uh, on third party stuff. But uh, a lot of these producers that are getting screwed over by Google um, that basically Google says you got nowhere to go so we can do anything we want with you, I think uh, is problematic. Uh, a lot of these guys are paid by uh, Patreon. And for that part, it doesn't matter where they go as long as they get hosted and don't really have to pay anything for it. So other people can sell ads for their content. Um, and I think this is a, you got to think that YouTube is, especially the link from YouTube back to Google search uh, where they can sell a lot of this search uh, data and other stuff is, uh, you know, it's a sum of the parts. So I don't think uh, if you look at YouTube being a 25% uh, of the income, uh, it may be actually more responsible for maybe something like 40% than what's out there. So uh, yeah, the uh, somebody posted in the den uh, the lady that runs YouTube has basically been there for 20 years and uh, the head of YouTube since Google bought it, really. Uh, but she was in a conference about, I don't know, two weeks ago. And uh, a lot of people left scratching their head when she was asked a bunch of tough questions. Uh, she kind of gave some answers that made everybody think there may be a great deal of problems ahead. Uh, now that we've made the, uh, I think it happened right around this low on June 3rd. Uh, but again, like I said, I don't know if it'll bust a thousand bucks on this run, but I think at best it goes sideways for a while. And then uh, they continue to run into antitrust issues. Uh, and of course, uh, there's already one senator uh, that is talking about uh, revoking uh, one of the original laws that gave uh, almost all these folks on the internet free reign to do anything without being sued. Uh, and I think there's probably enough common cause around that, that they may lose their, uh, their ability to do that. And that would really hurt uh, Google and the fact that they probably would face lawsuits on a daily basis. Uh, but they don't seem to be getting the message either uh, on the political front or on the business front from their own providers, a lot of those providers could leave and cause a huge problem for Google. Uh, other things going on in the news today, uh, Microsoft, uh, the leak uh, for their new product came out today. Um, they're off about, what, four bucks or so from the high yesterday. They just went back into this gap higher that had uh, 26 million shares, you're back into it with about 21 million shares. Uh, support probably should come in about 132. Uh, the news for Microsoft today is that the uh, fold, uh, fold up or fold out laptop that we've been talking about with Tom O'Brien on Fridays uh, pretty much is leaked. The internal name is Centaur, of course, the uh, upper body of a man and the lower body of a horse, uh, kind of giving you an idea of what this thing's going to do. But of course, uh, it does two things. It is a tablet, but it is a nine by nine tablet that folds out to an 18 by nine display. 
uh, and a keyboard that goes with it that is as wide. So you can fold that up, put both of them in your purse. Uh, supposed to be maybe a pound and a half. Um, some of the pictures were fairly interesting. Uh, you always have to worry about whether or not those things were made up by somebody with Photoshop. Uh, but it, no real discussion from Microsoft saying that that isn't true. Uh, it will run a version of Windows that is very light, uh, not for heavy lifting kind of things, word processing, answering your emails. Uh, but it will also run uh, Android apps also, which is kind of interesting. Uh, and eh, you know, I don't know how far that's going to go, but a lot of these products, when they come out, don't have a real strong use case. Uh, if they can find the real strong use case, that's where these products become rather large. Uh, but uh, that's about it. Uh, give me a call at 877-927-6648. Email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, you can always put a message in the den. Uh, to do. Let's look at some of the stuff going on. Uh, to do. Again, uh, a lot of these stocks did kind of come off. We still haven't really broken uh, a downtrend in these. Um, some of the stocks that uh, came uh, and I was looking at this morning were actually on Enterprises. Uh, this one did kind of roll over. Uh, very light volume as it pierced the high yesterday to $74.93. Symbol on this one is AAXN. Not a lot of volume, uh, not a well-known stock, but did seem to pierce those highs. Uh, to, to, oh, wow, we fell like a brick there. I'm showing 27 on the S&P cash. Eh, don't blink if you don't got it. Okay, Claris uh, Therapeutics, another one testing its... Uh, recent uh, lows, um, and we kind of doing that yesterday, about 500,000 shares back on the 6th. Uh, yesterday, 344,000 shares, just uh, 216,000 shares today. From what I'm looking at, a lot of those stocks that were kind of near the lows that it had bounced uh, are doing that kind of same thing. American Eagle Outfitters uh, did kind of bounce back into the uh, – trading range, but didn't do so on a lot of volume. Uh, it kind of rolled back down. Any closed below 17 bucks still shows problematic. You're at 1716, but not a lot of volume. Uh, 2 million shares compared to the 8.7 million share low back on February 24th, uh, excuse me, December 24th. We'll be back in a minute. White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term profits. Aspects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TD and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. 
That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading in larry's first week alone he sent out 25 charts six videos and a full report to his subscribers in just one week if you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade then larry's service fibonacci 24 7 is something that you must try right now new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee with nothing to risk sign up now to larry pesavento's fibonacci 24 7 by visiting the front page of tfnn.com under trading newsletters don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Um, other things in the news and snooze, uh, Ulta... Beauty, uh, kind of, uh, and Sally Beauty both uh, had some fairly decent days down with volume. This is based on Amazon saying that they're getting into that business uh, and may even do some kind of brick and mortar thing uh, like, uh, what is it, uh, like Whole Foods. Um, so Amazon kind of weird deciding they want to get back in at least a little brick and mortar. But I have to tell you, I go buy a couple of places uh, that are fairly close to uh, beauty supply places. And uh, for people thinking that no one goes to brick and mortar, it may want to be one of the few stores where these women are always piling in and out. Um, it's next to a restaurant I like, and I'll be in there, and I mean – a, a constant stream of folks. So it, apparently it's not uh, Ulta. Uh, there's also another one that I remember, um, but that was one of them. Uh, I'm trying to remember the other one. I'll think of it here in a minute. Uh, but of course, all you got to do is hear Amazon's coming for you and you run for the hills. That was yesterday's down. Uh, today, not so much happening in it, but it is uh, interesting to be in that space with uh, the big guys Gunning for you, uh, Amazon. Even them are down today. The Amazon Amazonians uh, back to uh, support or minor support from the 17th. Uh, you were up on uh, that day on 2.6 million shares. Today you got uh, 2.1 million shares already. Uh, the support probably looks like it comes in a lot better uh, on the. Uh, close of the day of the 10th that is at 1860 and now we're around uh, 1877 so wouldn't be surprised to come back in there and find uh, all these candles from the 10th 11th 12th 13th 14th act as at least some support for amazon although i don't see a great deal happening other than that but that's gonna buy okay sally is the other one uh, S A L L Y. I think this is the one that's next to the place that I eat at. Uh, S B H. Uh, now again, this one got hurt a great deal worse. Not exactly sure why. Maybe because Ultra has been doing so well, and already Sally, kind of third man, third wheel in the business already. Much less Amazon getting involved in it down on 6.2 million shares yesterday uh, where this blew apart and went through the previous low of August 2nd of 2018. Let's look back a little a little farther. I mean, you kind of blew through everything. This is back to November 16th, 2017. We'll go back. Is there anything else? I mean, 
This thing was a $33 stock back in 2016, March 30th of 2016. Uh, but that looks fairly significant, other than you didn't have the volume, maybe. Uh, let's zoom in here a little bit more. Yeah, 6.2 million shares. So that is more volume than the 1405 November 16th low uh, of 2017 for Sally Beauty 2. So those stocks kind of look to be on the outs. And I don't see a lot of reason to probably short a $16 stock, uh, but uh, very interesting. Uh, other things going on uh, as we get close to the high of July 9th, 2018, and first Majestic Silver uh, watching this. Uh, that was about 3 million shares. Uh, yesterday, as you get close, you had almost 7 million shares. Today, you went a little higher, 813, and did a little reversal. Uh, but not a sign there. I thought maybe that would get up to that 848 today and give us a little bit of a signal. Uh, okay, let's get a little closer time frame. Other stocks that I think may be giving us a heads up uh, in the short-term future uh, is uh, Ameritrade Financial, 4871 uh, on March 25th. That came in with 6 million shares. I uh, retested that yesterday with just uh, 2.9 million shares. Today, you pierced that back into uh, a previous gap. So far, about 2 million shares. Uh, but uh, if you break that, 45.70 is the next uh, big low in Ameritrade. Let's go back a little bit farther. Yeah, 45.70 is the December 26, 2018 low. Uh, but again, uh, energy... Is, is it great on the way down? Uh, it's good, but it's no different than the energy on the way up from that December 26 low. So you may have just a giant trading range of about 45 bucks to 57 bucks going on in that. Uh, to, to, to ATHM, which is Auto Home. Um, this thing's been bouncing along. I wanted to see if energy came back in uh, its support, which has been around 80 bucks. Uh, you certainly have uh, decent volume today of a million dollars. You want to go, uh, I mean, a million shares. You want to go back into the 1.2 million share low of March 8th and take a look. And the up day of February 22nd at 1.8 million shares. This also looks like it could slip back down to 66.60, which is the January 14th, 2019th low. Uh, BHP. Another one on my radar here. Now we're off 25 points on the S&P cash. This one is giving us a signal of some sort today. Three and a half million shares on April 10th this year, $57.25. Uh, yesterday, you had 1.45 million shares today, 1.2 million shares so far. But it looks like uh, it did go above that previous high. It looks like it could easily close below that previous high and do so on half the volume, which is generally, um, like I said, a signal that a blind man could see. Uh, Biogen, IDEC, after this thing blown apart, it's going to need a lot of consolidation. Um, but uh, you're back up into the April 5th high at 244.08 that had 3.25 million shares with about 1.5 million shares so far today. So you got to look at that and think, eh, uh, what else is going on here? BLK, BlackRock uh, got up to a gap that uh, went up to about, uh, what, uh, 472 uh, and didn't quite even make that. You had a lot of volume going up into that and some big, strong days, but it never, ever made it before it turned around. Anheuser-Busch did test its previous high and did do, do so on higher volume, although it is pulling back today. Uh, the energy is about the same on the way up and the way down, which means that you could be in a trading range from about 90 bucks back down to 80 bucks. Uh, generally, these stocks do very well if the economy is going south. Uh, so if you are bearish, you generally want to look elsewhere. If you're bullish, you might want to look somewhere else also. And, Beer, wine stocks, just don't, uh, alcohol, spirits, just never seem to be a great time to short them. Um, if the economy's good, they don't go down very far. Economy's bad, they actually go higher most of the time. 
We'll be back after a minute, and we'll close up shop in the last segment of the day. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And as we said, Tyson Foods, uh, eh, kind of interesting candle. Could, I guess, could be worse. After the bell tonight, we've got uh, two stocks that are coming out for earnings. Uh, Micron uh, certainly has a lot of people short uh, last time I looked. This one's one of the most hated stocks uh, in the uh, SMH sector right now. Uh, but the last three or four days, well, the last two days, uh, short interest has been waning and down about uh, Ten percent for an average that's normally around seventeen percent over the last month. Um, we've also got uh, some very interesting action going on, uh, but uh, you got to, uh, you got a ton of I don't know, about twenty. It looks like twenty five percent short, if that's right. Maybe I'm missing a digit. Uh, but certainly it is uh, increased in the last reporting period uh, and up about, is that right, 500,000 shares? Uh, five million, no, five, up five million shares uh, additional short from the last reporting period. Uh, we'll get another report uh, 
probably eh, maybe today or tomorrow that will drop on short interest. So I'll look here after the show. But of course, uh, got to keep an eye on that one. That will move the SMHs. I would not be surprised to a lot of people trying to get out the door before that one. Uh, the other one that's actually making uh, probably a little bit of action going on after the uh, hours is Federal Express. Uh, we talked about Amazon getting their own Air Force uh, and drone facility uh, to launch another 21 planes coming on in the next couple of years that will really hurt FedEx and um, uh, UPS uh, for the freight that they cover on the United States. Uh, down today, volumes uh, not looking good. Test of 150.68 is likely on Federal Express. Listen to uh, Tom O'Brien after 4 o'clock for all the play-by-play -play on earnings. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time.